Hello everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality and meditation. Everyone who is interested is, is welcome to join. Please submit your question in one at a time. Please be brief and precise. Please let me know how the audio and video is doing today. I will start reading your comments and your question. Christine Koe Satu, Bilim Sukihoto Ajahn Satu. Christine Koe, dear Ajahn, the video is loud and clear. Thank you. Anna Goldman Satu Satu. Kenatan, good morning, Tanajan, you are clear. Thank you. P.L. and Indira Valpola, good morning, Tanajan. Good morning to you. Must be nearly midnight for you. Anima Jaya Sekera. Jaya Sekera. Good morning, Ajahn. Good morning to you too. Christine Koe, may Ajahn be well and strong. Thank you. Kenneth Hanke, well, reading Ajahn, may you be well and happy. Audio and video is clear. Thank you. Joanne Lim Chui Yin, good afternoon, Ajahn. May you be well and healthy. Thank you. James Ong, greetings, Ajahn. Greetings to you. Shio Hishan, good morning, Tanajan. Everything is good and clear. Thank you. Khoan Patum Napa Satu. So far, so good. No question yet. P.L. Tisheng, good morning, Ajahn. Good morning to you. Tane Poe Yen, Satu Satu. Question from Pikuni Pasada in Sri Lanka. My idea is that Asakana Gami has overcome sexual lust and strong craving for good food, for example, but that they are still craving, for example, for the pleasant physical or fine material experiences one can have during meditation. Please, can you explain the difference between this subtle and gross karma tanha? What kind of karma tanha stop for Sakana Kami and what kind of karma tanha is Sakana Kami still left with? As far as I can understand, the Sakana Kami has reduced the sensual desire to about half and half. But they are still the same sensual desire. But the intensity of or the amount is about half. That means you still you still have sensual desire for 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 the five sensual objects. Eyes, ear, nose, tongue and body 
especially that of a, of a person, meaning the, the sexual desire is still in the Sakidagami, only that it is not as strong as that of a, a Sotapanna. A Sotapanna has about 100% sexual desire, while a Sakidagami has reduced down to about 50% by the contemplation of the asupa, of the unpleasant parts of the body. Sakidakami hasn't yet been able to eliminate the sexual desire 100%. This takes up to the next level of uh, anagami. Once one becomes an anagami, one can get rid of the sexual desire completely, 100%, due to the fact that and Anangami see the body as a supra 100% of the time, not just nearly 50% of the time. That's so all. This is my interpretation. The difference between an Anangami and Sakidakami. They have the same sexual desire, differs in the intensity. The Sakidakami still have about 50% sexual desire left, where an, an anagami has completely got rid of the, the sexual desire 100%. Indrayani sen namo buddhaya ajan. Doris Chan, Chim. Happy morning, Ajahn. Sadhu, Sadhu. Asana, Chunna, Sevi. Greetings, Ajahn. Everything is good. Nong Lin, Sadhu, Sadhu. Piao and Indira, Wapola. Tanajan, under what circumstances is contemplation of death important? Under the circumstances, it's important all the time. The Buddha say one should contemplate death as much as possible because this will drastically reduce the amount of greed and cravings in the mind. So you can do this death contemplation at all times. He instructed his, uh, his, his assistant, the Venerable Ananda, to contemplate on death every in and out breath. He said, when you breathe in and when you don't breathe out, you die. When you breathe out and when you, and you don't breathe in, you die. So he said that you should contemplate on death every moment, every breath, of every in and out breath. This will stop your cravings and, and desire for things. Kim Bun Chu, good afternoon, Ajahn. Lim Ho, Satu Satu. Bruce Lee and Lam Saya, Namaste Gandhi, Ajahn, audio is clear. Thank you. Indrayani, Satu. Ram Sat, Namaste Gandhi, Rajan. Kim Chung Chong, Satu. Yulin Go, Satu, Handy Box, Satu, Xiao Hi Shang. Can Tanaja please give some instruction or some tips on a super contemplation? By studying the 32 parts of the body, try to keep that in, in, in your mind at all times. Look at the body, both the, the outside and the inside parts. You first go to the five parts outside, hair of the head, hair of the body, nail teeth, skin, then you go under the skin, go into flesh, to, to sinew or sinew, bones, and all the major organs, like the heart, lungs, liver, intestines, and kidneys, and the brain. And then you also 
want to look at the fluid of the body, inside the body, such as the blood and so forth. This is the way to contemplate on the Sutra. On another, another way is to think of the body when it dies, when it becomes a corpse. If it's left in the cemetery, it can become bloated. It can be eaten by worms and insects or eaten by animals. The parts can be separated and eventually it will become dry and left as the skeleton. So this is the contemplation of the supernature of the body to counter the pleasant uh, perception of the body so that we can have a balanced view of the body. Then we can get rid of our sexual desire for the body. Any Lam Satu. Question from Samanji, Sri Lanka. Some non Buddhists hold the news, hold the view that Buddhism only focuses on dukkha or suffering, and as a result, it, its followers fail to achieve material development or worldly comfort, such as well, what is your view? Well, the, the problem is the suffering. Suffering is like a mental disease. So one has to focus on getting rid of the mental disease. Because what is the use of having material comfort and wealth when, you're, when, you, when you are still sick? When you are sick, you cannot use your material wealth for any happiness. So what you want to do is to get rid of your, your illness. And dukkha is a form of mental illness that can be gotten rid of. And the way to get rid of this mental suffering or dukkha, one has to forego the pursuit of, of worldly comfort, such as wealth, for instance. Because going after worldly comfort can create mental suffering. So one wants to make sure that one doesn't create suffering unnecessarily by going after worldly comfort. One should focus on getting rid of the disease, the mental disease, which is dukkha or suffering. Because just like when your body is sick, when you get sick, you don't go to work, you don't go look after worldly comfort. Your priority is to fix your body first, make your body well. Same way with Buddhism, our priority is to, to take care of the mental sickness, which is dukkha, or stress that appears in the mind all the time. And in order for us to be able to completely get rid of the sickness of the mind, we have to forego our pursuit of worldly comfort because pursuing the worldly comfort is another way of increasing stress in the mind. So we have to stop this. Once the mind is cured, the mind becomes happy. It can, it can live a very simple life. It doesn't need any material comfort because it has the mental comfort, comfort, which is far better than the material comfort or the worldly comfort. So this is why we don't, we don't go after worldly comfort. Our goal is to go after our mental sickness, which is dukkha. Once we have got rid of the mental sickness, then our mind will be very happy, very, very contented, even though we live in in poverty. The physical poverty doesn't bother the mind that is happy. The mind can live in any situation, under any situation of the body. Tony Yip, Satu Satu, Adi Aha, Satu, Sisu Rivati. 
Satu Satu Sawante Satu Ang Bichin Hi Hi Mom Nice to see you Well nothing to ask Sri Gan Satu Satu Piao and Indira Valpola Niyatanajan and Sutta test is reference that consciousness cannot survive without the other four aggregate beings. Bira Sutta, how does consciousness survive after that? Consciousness is part of the, the function of the mind. The mind has four functions. Have consciousness, have feelings, have perception, and have, have thoughts. This four work in conjun conjunction with the body. When, the, when there is a body, then there are sensual objects that will come into contact with the sensual organs. When, the sens sensual, when there is contact between the sensual objects and the sensual organs, then there will be the, the working of the consciousness, which is uh, vinyana. And once vinyana starts to work, they'll, they'll start to be, then the, the perception of sanya will come into play, followed by feelings of vetana, then followed by thoughts. For example, when the body sees a person, then consciousness will then uh, be aware of this person, then perception of sanya will try to analyze, to figure out who this person is, whether he is good or he is bad, for instance. If he is good, there, there will arise good feeling. If he is bad, there will arise bad feeling. And when there arise bad feeling or good feeling, then the thought will arise, what should I do with this object? If it's good feelings, then we should go after this person. If it's bad feelings, then we should go away from this person, for instance. This is how the five khanda works in conjunction together. Once there is no body, then the four mental khanda will remain inactive. Or if it's active, it is active with the, with the working of the Sanya or memory, memory of what had been done before, good or bad, karma, perform, then there will still be uh, feelings and there will still be thought in the forms of dreams, good dreams and bad dreams, why there is no body attached to the, to the mind, connected to the mind. This is my interpretation of the five khandas with the body and without the body. When there is no body, the mind exists in the dreamland. When there is a body, the mind then uh, uses the sensual objects connected, uh, contacted by the body and, and react to those sensual objects that come into contact with the mind through the body. Alvin Lee Wei Ping, good morning, Tanajan. Satu, Satu. Pransa, it's hard raining with thunder at the moment in my town at Seocha. I'm testing myself a fear of that by do meditation and don't focus when thunders happen. When finished meditation, I found that I can do meditation for a long time and feeling that my fullness is better than the past. Thank you for teaching and I will continue in practice and learn Dhamma. You are welcome. I will leave away from Pribani Tanajan, Satu, Satu. Shio Vishen, thank you Tanajan for your great instruction, Satu, Satu.
ดีลิมสาธุคอนลีมันเดียธนาจารย์ with respect can I do contemplation on death and s e r t i n p a t mainly to detach the mind from the body if I am on a p r e c e p t and no sexual desire it's up to you you do it for the purpose of getting rid of your of your defilement if you're still attached to your body then you have to do death contemplation to be able to let go of your attachment to the body if you have sexual desire you have to use a super contemplation to, to get rid of your sexual desire a d e l i n e Chin, good afternoon t a n a j a n good afternoon to you question from from Toronto, Canada Chandi, Chandi Sam Chandi Sam from Toronto, Canada I am a single mom raising a teenage son he is almost 16 I feel it's my duty and it's important that he gets a good education and become a good human being but it is very challenging in this world nowadays as there are so many bad influences around kids these days it is very easy for them to get into trouble i feel i am feeling feeling as a mother whenever he picks up a bad habit or does something bad so i am always worrying and anxious and disappointed it makes me so depressed and i can't function when things happen please guide me how to stop worrying and stay detached from my expectation of him well you have to stop your expectation because what you expect is 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 a nija is not certain whether you can get it or not so you have to accept the, this fact that what you expect of your son might not be possible so if you try to achieve something impossible you can get stress and worry and anxiety if you want to get rid of your stress worry and anxiety then you just have to let let him be let him be whatever he's gonna be do you do your part try to teach him the right and proper way of being a person but if he decides he wants to go the other way there's nothing you can do about it so you have to look at your son as anicca as anatta anicca meaning you cannot carve a future for him definitely maybe possible maybe not possible this is anicca anatta you cannot control things around him you cannot control his decision whatever he wants to do whichever direction he wants to go this is something that you cannot do it do for him so you have to accept this fact that he is anicca that he is anatta not under your control you can do what you want you can do your part but as far as his part is concerned you cannot do that for him if he decides to go bad there's nothing you can do about it don't you, what you can do is to tell him what is right and what is wrong what is good and what is bad but if, but as far as 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 your son is concerned he will decide for himself what he wants to be and there's nothing you can do because he is anatta you have to look at him like 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 the weather he's like the weather you cannot force or control the weather so you cannot force and control your son chaya nidyamada satu piyao and indira vakula Yatanajan, why does a sotapanna has no fear of death? Is it because a sotapanna has no more sakayality, personality view? That's right. He sees the body of the five kanda as being natural phenomena, not as being himself. See, an ordinary, unenlightened person still look at the five kanda as being himself or herself. With a sotapanna, he has 
seeing, he, he seeing the body and the feelings of the five khandhas as being a natural phenomena which is not under his control. He has to let go. If the body wants to get old, get sick or die, that's not, he cannot stop that from happening. So he just accepts the, the, the truth of the body, the truth of the five khandhas. And he knows he cannot control them. So he has no fear of that because he accepts that death is, is something that is unavoidable. It is part of the natural phenomena. Gen Gen So greeting Tanajan. Ayi Namasagan Tanajan. Question from Hassan from Indonesia. Can you please teach me the best way to meditate in daily life routine that can have the same result as we do sitting meditation? Because I can do sitting meditation due to my work and living in an employee mess. Well, then you cannot expect much from from your practice. What you can do is practice mindfulness. Keep focusing on what you do. Don't let your mind think aimlessly or think without any particular any any reason. Don't talk to don't do any mental chatter. Try to stop this thoughts by focusing on your body movement. Uh, you can recite the mantra Bhutto Bhutto as you go about your doing your work. This will reduce your thought and makes your mind be, becomes lighter and calmer. But if you want the mind to be completely calm and peaceful, you have to sit and meditate. And you do the same thing. When you sit and meditate, you keep watching your breath at the tip of your nose. Just watch your, watch the breath coming in and go out, going out without having any mental and when any mental chatter. Don't think about anything. Just keep watching. Or if you want that, you can use the mantra Bhutto Bhutto instead of watching your breath. So this is about what you can do in your daily life. I.e. Tanajan, if someone meditates regularly, even though it may not be deep and not too long, is it normal for someone whose meditation object is not a sutra to be less interested in sensuality in husband and wife? I don't know, you know. Each individual has different tendency or ability. So if you don't have any sensuality, then that's a good thing. If you have, then you, if you want to reduce it, then you have to contemplate on the sutra. Question number two from IE. What good deed should be done for someone who has had an abortion? 
do we need to explain that the abortion she had was wrong so that in the future she will not have it again either in this life or in next life well just tell her that whatever she does to some someone it will come back to her eventually sooner or later maybe next time when she 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 was she was going to be born in the womb of her mother, her new mother, and her new mother decided to abort her. So she would then not be able to to be born as human. You know, it's like an eye for an eye. Whatever you do to somebody, you will get it back in return in your future life. Eva Chakma Satu Satu Chiu Hisheng Tanujan are there and in karma which can block one's progress in his her practice. Why some Kruba Ajahn were able to finish the path whereas others only finish half or less even though they also practice very diligently. I don't know. Each individual have different problems, different hindrances, different obstruction. So I cannot answer this question. You have to. You have to ask specific questions like like yourself. You know. But if you throw me this type of question, I don't know how to answer them. It's not my business to worry about other people anyway. One should worry more about one's own problem and not other people's problem. Look at yourself and ask yourself, how come you're not being enlightened yet? Try to search for the, the answer. It's easier than to think about other people. When ye satu satu, PL and Indira Valpola, dear Tanajan, faith follower, and Dhamma follower are both destined to become Sotapanna before they die. What is the difference between faith follower and Dhamma follower? I don't know. You know faith is faith, Dhamma is Dhamma. It's the, the, it's, the thing is obvious already, so what is there for me to, to, to reply to? One has faith, one, the other has Dhamma. So faith will lead one to Dhamma, and one, once one has Dhamma, then one can become enlightened. See Jilin Satu Satu. I think we should focus more our, on our practice and not worry about other people's practice. Ask question about yourself. Why am I not enlightened yet? What is keeping me from becoming enlightened? Rather than talk about all these things about other people. It's not important to you. What's important to you is how am I, why am I not yet enlightened? And what should I do to become enlightened? Question from Levan, USA. When we do sitting meditation, we are trying to still our mind and develop jhana and not contemplating. However, in our daily activities, we are mindful of our body movement and also contemplating all of our experiences in terms of the three characteristics as much as possible. Is this correct? Not really. If you still haven't yet achieved jhana, the, the, you should concentrate more on practicing mindfulness without thinking. Stop thinking when you're not meditating. You want to get to jhana. By contemplating on the three characteristics will keep your mind thinking. 
and this will make it harder for you to enter into jhana when you meditate. So when you're not meditating, don't contemplate on the on anything yet. Just focus on your body movement only. Or use the mantra Bhutto Bhutto to start your mind from thinking or contemplating. Contemplating is not yet this is not yet the time to contemplate. You can do contemplate after you have achieved jhana. And then after you come out of jhana, then you can do contemplating on the three characteristics of existence. But before you get to jhana, try not to think. Just try to use mindfulness to stop your thought. But keep focusing on your body movement. By watching your body movement and don't think about the three characteristics. You have to stop thinking before you meditate and during your meditation. And then you will get into jhana. Once you are able to get into jhana, and you can do it almost every time that you meditate, then when you are not meditating, then you can go and think about the three characteristics. The three characteristics. Yeah. Contemplating should be, come after you have achieved jhana. Don't do it before that because it will interfere with your, your developing of jhana. Because when to, in order to get into jhana, you have to stop thinking. See you, Jim. Thank you very much for Tanajan Dharma teaching. Again, much appreciated. You're welcome. I, question number three, will over time in friendship, everyone group together based on their frequency. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think your question is not really important to answer. And, and I don't really have the answer anyway. Question number four, when we are disappointed in the situation or someone and we still try to act normal and try to accept and live with the situation even though we sometimes we call the disappointment. Is that wrong and call hypocrite? I don't know. Parabhati Raj, dear John, reading from New Zealand. Which monastery do you reside? I would like to understand about visiting there. Thank you for the teaching. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm residing in Wat Yan Monastery. It's near Pattaya Beach Resort. You can, uh, you can contact my assistant at my website, pastorchad.com, for more information. Go to passsuchad.com and go to the contact page. Then you can send an email and ask for more information and you will be given the necessary information. Deborah Jonas, greeting from Toronto. Dear Tanajan, it is nice to see that you are well. Thank you for the inspiration. It's nice to hear from you again. I hope you still keep up with your practice. Okay, we have uh, information about how to get to my website by Rusli Alamsaya. So if, if Para, Pabati Raj wants to contact and find out more information, please go to this web page. Thank you, Rusli Alamsaya, for your information.
Yeah. Bruce Lee and Nancy, yeah, my pleasure, dear John. It's nice to have someone who can respond very quickly to the situation. Pabati Raj, then thank Ajahn. Okay, just send in the email and you were given the 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 information that you like to like to know. Piyao and Indira Valpola, Tanajan, as you practice concentration breath, that's time to that's time to get to jhana and become shorter with time. For example, can one get to jhana from obese or peace within film breath? It depends on the strength of your mindfulness. The stronger your mindfulness and continuous your mindfulness, then it will be quicker and easier for you to enter into jhana. So that's why we have to keep on practicing mindfulness before we do the sitting meditation. If we are continuously mindful and never uh, forget our mindfulness, then when we meditate, we can get into jhana very easily and quickly.
Ayi, thank you, Tanajan, for your teaching. You're welcome. Payao Satu, Piao and Indira Valpola, Tanajan, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with all of us. Please look after yourself. You're welcome. I think asking a lot of questions might is not really helpful if this if question doesn't concern your practice. I think you should be asking more about your practice than about anything else. Because a lot of information you don't really need to know. What you need to know is how to calm your mind, how to get your mind into jhana. And then how to be able to maintain this perception of the three characteristics and a supa in your mind at all times. This is the real essence of the, te of the teaching, is the practice of meditation of samadhi and wisdom of vipassana. This is what you want to establish your mind with. Samadhi or concentration and wisdom, being able to see the Four Noble Truths the three characteristics of existence and to see a supa at all times in your mind. Inilam satu satu. I am not getting a good signal. Tanajan's voice echoes a lot. I cannot clearly listen. Is this the case with everybody else or is just the case of I alone? Because sometimes the connection can be be only happening to a, a certain individual and not to everybody. And if it does, what can we do? This is part of the the world we live in, anicca, anatta. Things keep changing. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And we cannot always make it good. Sometimes we have to live with the bad also. EOSC Satu Satu Panima Jaya Jaya Sekara. You are loud and clear. So it's it's not happening to everybody. Cannot hunt. The signal is very good, Tanajan. Thank you. CG Lim, Tanajan, the video and the audio and video are good here, Tanajan. Thank you. Okay. PL and Indira Vapola, we have good reception, Tanajan. Thank you. Deborah Jonas, dear Tanajan, I have been practicing less meditation at home, but doing more dana and taking care of the family and kids. I am planning on taking a week soon to focus on practice. I think about my time on Chion Mountain and am very grateful for your kindness and Kunjub's kindness. I am grateful for what I learned when I was there. I hope you can use what you have learned to your benefit in your daily life, to let go of everything, but still do what you have to do, but not be attached to anything. Let things, if things should fall apart, let it be, because this is something you cannot stop or prevent it from happening. Pramsa JW is clear sound and signal. Thank you.
Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions for today. So maybe I think it's about time for us to call this meeting to an end. Thank you for your participation. I hope this meeting can benefit you and help you advance in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye.